video is all about planting under the canopy of large and small shade trees. And I wanna go through a lot of the tips that I basically have used over time to get some really lush growth underneath my massive oak tree in the front. But first, I have a question for you guys. Do you mostly grow in sun or shade? And if you grow under the canopy of large trees, what are some of your favorite shrubs, some of your understory shrubs that you use under the canopy of your trees? Perennials would also be welcome. Make sure to let me know where you garden. So I'm starting from across the street today. And yes, I, there are two houses next door to me that are for sale. It's, I don't think it's because I'm a bad neighbor. It's because I think largely kind of the age of my neighborhood and people are downsizing or upsizing. Um, so Stuart, if you don't mind taking a sweep of what my house looks like from across the street, and you can see that pretty much uh, storm damage notwithstanding that I still am gardening in a lot of shade and very much I am gardening underneath shade trees, which presents a number of challenges that we have to be mindful of because we don't want to damage in any way the trees that we are growing uh, our gardens underneath. We wanna make sure that we, uh, we utilize practices that really make sure that we are taking good care of those trees because trees are magical things and especially on the prairie here, they're very, very, valued. So now let's go back across the street to my front yard and in a previous video I talked about the original design of my bed line and how that was initiated based on the shade lines of my tree. It was added to over time and expanded so that it both sides practically come all the way down to the street. But if you'll notice, it's just one continuous line that I have edged in brick and stone because it matches the facade of my house. But let me talk very specifically about some of the challenges that you'll encounter when growing under and in the very root prone areas of a shade tree, particularly a large shade tree. Now I've said it before, this is a massive Schumard oak that is almost 100 years old. And when we moved in, there was nothing growing underneath the canopy of this tree because it was so heavily shaded that I couldn't even get grass to grow. So my tip number one is you wanna make sure that what is growing underneath that canopy gets adequate light. So if necessary, you might want to prune up the canopy you might want to take off some of the lower branches. You might want to remove the density of the foliage and the interior of the plant and do what you can to absolutely maximize the amount of light that you can get under the tree. So that would be step number one. And you're also obviously pruning for the health of the tree. Now my garden faces south, so even though this is a shade tree at certain times of the, of the year when the sun gets much lower south in the sky in August and September, actually that sun comes in underneath the canopy and this gets pretty much light. So also be attentive to how light conditions change underneath your shade trees as the seasons progress. So as a rule, we just really want to protect the root zone of the tree itself. Now it may look as if I brought in mounds and mounds of dirt to plant in underneath this oak tree, but no, I did not. I did bring in some dirt as it got closer to the street, but very much as it is near the trunk itself, I did not bring in a lot of dirt. Actually, I only brought in about one to two inches, at the most four inches of compost before I started planting. Because I don't want to smother the roots of the tree, I definitely don't ever want to have any kind of mulch up against the tree itself because that will then create a vector for all sorts of, of diseases and pathogens, pathogens to really cause damage to the trunk itself. 
So I'm going to keep any of that compost away from the trunk of the tree. So I only brought in about one to two inches of really good compost. You'll also know that or notice that this is kind of on a grade. So over time, some of that compost might be prone to washing away. So I did it a little bit more deeply than that. So number one, you only want to bring in about one to four inches max of compost and planting medium underneath your tree. Okay, number two, start small. So anything that I planted, even though it looks very mature and lush, and it looks like maybe I dropped in really large five gallon boxwoods or whatever. No, I did not. I started out very small, which enabled two different things. It enabled a lot of these shrubs to grow in over time and it minimized the amount of root disturbance that there was around the root zone of the tree when I planted it. So a lot of these started out as just quart size specimens, maybe gallon size at the max when I planted them. And then they were able to grow in place. And as a rule, you will find when you plant something when it's smaller, it will adapt more readily and probably be more successful over time than if you plant a larger specimen of the very same plant. So when these were installed, they were very small quart size to a gallon size max. And that was true regardless of what the plant was. Now, speaking of plants, here historically are some of the plants that at least in my zone seven garden have tended to do well under the shady canopy of my tree. When I first created this bed, my instinct was try to, to try to just grow ground cover. And for many of you, that may be an option. For years, I tried to get nothing but vinca minor and ajuga established. And whether because there was just too much uh, competition from the canopy of the tree, not enough light, too much competition for moisture, I'm not really sure. Nevertheless, I couldn't get a regular ground cover established and so I decided to try using shrubs as ground cover and that worked brilliantly for me. So some of those shrubs were in this planting list. Nana Nandinas, which grow short and were very easy to plant in. They don't mind their roots being disturbed and they really have made a very effective ground cover underneath the canopy of my oak tree. Later on, I was also able to plant some things like some barberries, some lemon lime Nandinas, and even some other shrubs like boxwoods and loripetalums. But again, I started very small. When you're planting in a, an area that is dense with roots, what you need to be is flexible. So if I would encounter a really large root or something that was impeding my digging or my planting something in a specific space, then I would just move my planting zone over a little bit to where I was able to access enough soil and enough depth to be able to plant that shrub or that perennial. And I wasn't as concerned about damaging maybe some of the fibrous, the shallow fibrous roots from the tree itself because those will regenerate over time, unlike the really deep tap roots and really large massive lateral roots that the trees put out for stability. The feeder roots that absorb nutrients and moisture that are much more shallow and easier to dig through can regenerate themselves pretty quickly. Now, something that you wanna pay attention to, when you plant under the canopy of a tree, you might think that because it's in an area that is less hot, protected from the wind and generally cooler, that you won't have to water as much. 
Well, sometimes that's true, but more often than not, what I have discovered is that because of the canopy of the tree, not a lot of rainfall really penetrates the canopy and makes it into the understory plantings. So in many cases, you'll find that you're gardening in dry shade and you wanna make sure that you provide supplemental moisture. So especially when these plantings are getting established, that they have enough moisture to be able to grow and thrive over time, initially and over time. The other thing is large trees like this or even small trees that are getting established, they're going to be hungry and very thirsty too. So they're in competition with anything that grows beneath them for those kind of moistures and nutrients. So that was basically how this got established. Now what this kind of does is it, to a certain degree, it mimics what you would see on a forest floor. So on the forest floor underneath the canopy of trees, what is there? There's lots of leafy mulch and there are understory plantings that help retain the moisture in the soil. If this were all barren, like it was when I first moved in, every time there was a high wind or an especially hot and sunny day, all of the moisture completely wicked away from that barren clay soil. So what all of these underplantings do is also help the tree by helping hold in the moisture and all of that good soil and compost that would otherwise just wash away. So it's basically a symbiotic relationship between the understory plantings and the tree itself. So some other plants that I have found do pretty well underneath the canopy of a tree are things that like the same conditions as the tree itself. So oak trees tend to be fairly acidic um, in terms of, or a little bit more on the acidic side in terms of the the growing environment that they like to get established in. So other plants, if Stuart, we can walk around this way. And by the way, I'll interject and say this, anything that will go to seed underneath a tree is very welcome because it will grow in place in situ with virtually no root disturbance whatsoever. So you'll have things like, in my case, I've got foxglove, I've got feverfew, I've got larkspur, um, I've got lots of hellebores and some Minoan lace. Those things will go to seed in this lush, moist, composty kind of soil in the, in the substrata underneath the tree with no root disturbance whatsoever. So you might try some other things like, oh, forget-me-nots, um, minor bulbs, something that might naturalize, because again, there will be no root disturbance to the tree itself when those things begin to take off. Another plant that I have found does fairly well if it does get some sun later in the season or in the day is spirea. It doesn't wanna grow in deep shade, but in light shade, I have found it does pretty well. Obviously, any kind of shade loving perennials will grow brilliantly for the most part. Hellebores for me have worked very, very well. In the back, I have Solomon seal. I've got some heuchera, coral bells, and heucherella. One thing that I have tried and tried to get established was a still bee. I have never been successful with it, so I don't even try anymore. I recognize my limitations and I just try some other things. But over here in this area, prior to that big ice storm when this huge branch came down this was just covered in azaleas because the azaleas like the oak tree like kind of acidic conditions the other valuable thing about growing azaleas is that they have a very shallow root system so by planting them, I wasn't in any way really disturbing the root zone of the plant itself, or of the tree itself. So if you'll notice, up against, and to give you a sense of scale, I would do this with my boys when they were little. This is how massive this trunk is. 
there's a show and tell. This trunk is massive and it was very large when we first moved in, but it's even larger now. But you'll notice that there's really not anything growing right up against the trunk of the tree. And you'll also notice, I can go like this, and you'll see that there's really no depth there. That is just the root zone of the tree and all of these other things, including these few weeds here, are just growing in the shallow compost layer underneath the tree. So those are some more things, azaleas, hollies, uh, in some cases boxwood. Those shrubs will do really well under the canopy of a shade tree. And lastly, let me say that it, that if you want interest, whether it's in the form of plants, ground covers, um, self-seeding color, bulbs, any of those kinds of things, one thing that I have found just invaluable, and that is some kind of garden ornament or some kind of focal point that is non-botanical that you can put underneath a shade tree. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, number one, it looks great, but number two, it creates a wonderful environment for all of those living creatures, birds, butterflies, yes, squirrels, anything that wants to um, bring life and vigor to your garden. So that's another wonderful reason to put something like a garden bench or a birdhouse, or in this case, a bird bath underneath your shade tree. So there's just a few tips that you guys can incorporate if you're trying to figure out how to grow under the shade of a massive or a small tree. Do it over time. You can add to it over time. Just make sure that you don't do anything to damage the tree itself. Remember to put comments below if you grow in the shade. What are some of your favorite shrubs and perennials that really like growing under the protection of high dappled shade? Okay, Stuart just told me to pop my collar because that's what I always do before we start shooting these segments, the fashion epilogue for today. So today I have on the same hunter boots I got off of eBay that I had on last week. I've got on the same jeans that I had on. These are Calvin Klein's from Nordstrom Rack. And then the top, a lot of times, I guess there's a pattern here. The tops and the jackets are often thrifted and the blouse is thrifted and so so is this jacket. This is a cabbie jacket that I got at a thrift store. I can't remember if it was Goodwill or exactly where it was. I've had it for years. I like it. And again, it's a cabbie jacket, but I like it because number one, it's very, very comfortable and I can, I guess I can garden in it. Today I'm actually going to a meeting in it, but I also like it because it has kind of a, a Chanel quality to it, kind of a faux Chanel quality to it that I like. And inspired by the fact that it was kind of Chanel-like, I decided I needed to put some pearls on. So I've got some, I'm kind of, a, I don't know if I can say this, I'm kind of an earring slut. I really like e earrings and these earrings I got just recently, I think they were $7. I got them at Nordstrom Rack, they're Lucky brand. And some of my places that I like to get, mostly I like to get my earrings as gifts because they're portable whenever hubs or my kids go traveling, there's something they can easily bring back to me. They're very, very distinctive. It's one of my fun little joys that I give myself each day is selecting what, what pair of earrings I want to wear. So I have a whole lot of them. I also like to find them at like Burlington Coat Factory, um, Forever 21, but I also really like to find them at estate sales and places that sell lots of silver and turquoise. So that's my little tip for today. Uh, and my ensemble. If you guys like these kind of little fashion epilogues, make sure to comment and let me know below.